built-in recorder, not with inputs. Here we are need something just at Catnip Corners. Everybody's here. So We're having the most amazing conversations. And here is Ross and and Richard Saunders, and they're having this conversation about the most boring thing float. ever. 32-bit float. Can you believe it? No. Susan can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most boring conversation I think I've had. They might as well be talking about electric okay. cars or, yeah, or what is this, a Bluetooth connection? favorite no, no, flavors of peanut butter or something. It's, um, it's Sports. And then you got your so filter. Boring, you guys. All the amazing See, things we could be talking I, I about. I tell people all the time about your workflow because they'll ask me, how do you do a podcast? Yeah. And I'll say, oh, well, here's what you buy. Here's the recorder. Here's the microphones you need and the cables. Spend a lot of money on the cables. But you can do the whole thing from an iPad. Uh, like my friend Richard Saunders, he does his whole podcast. Susan, stop snoring over there. Skeptic Zone, <laughs> which you can find where I'm all better Ross podcasts. I'm with Ross Bloodshaw discussing important things, which Susan Gerbeck does not like understand. Like a lemon on a stick. <laughs> like you recording the bike. I'd rather talk about the lemon on your how long has uh, Owner Ross and Kerry been going now? Over 11 years. Yeah, so I think it's graduated out of hobby into a uh, you know, uh, full-time side job. How do, you, how do you manage to fit it all in time-wise? Yeah, well, I have, I have a day job, so it's essentially my night and weekend job. Uh, but it's an investigations-based podcast, uh, so we've always got multiple investigations going on in the background. It, I mean, I'm impressed. Every time I hear the show, I'm thinking, when do they sleep? You know? <laughs> yeah, when do I sleep, Cara? <laughs> My wife's over here. And... Uh, very little. Very little, she says. <laughs> now, I... I... I, I particularly like Ross because he's admiring my new purchase there of a oh Zoom God. device for recording. <laughs> Susan doesn't understand the more snores from over there. But you, you appreciate 32-bit float, don't you? Yeah, we've been trying to convince Susan of the importance of this. But, yeah, essentially it's a lossless format. You know, you've got everything from the input. And then later on you can go and do the uh, resampling and pull the data that you need from it. This is, it's fantastic. See? See? You lose. Loud. You've yeah. lost all your audience now. Yeah, I didn't know about Let us know when it's 64. It's, it's for, uh, for Ono, Ross, and Carrie, we use the Zoom H6, and then we also have a Zoom uh, H4 in uh, <laughs> yes. as a backup. But yeah, I want another smaller recorder just yeah. because sometimes you go to say a John Edward uh, performance, and they tell you, you know, no recording devices, and they want to yeah. check your phone in yeah. and everything. It'd be nice to have a. Well, I. I use the Zoom H6 primarily for the Skeptic Zone when I'm in my own studio and I hook up a, a Rode NT1A microphone to it and that's why I do most of my readings from. Yeah. But with this one, and sorry Susan, <laughs> <laughs> with this one it means if I do field interviews and I take a couple of XLR mics like the Shaw SM57s or something, yeah. plug them straight in, no worrying about gain or anything. Yeah, and everything's and, synchronized and, and it's so small. Is, yeah. Palm, palm of your hands. yeah, you can it's get through the airport <sighs> if Australia will let you out. They sometimes do let me out to come here. <laughs> no, wait, uh, this is uh, apropos of nothing, but I've just been curious. Can we see you in Thor Love and Thunder? Well, I, s I spoke to somebody yesterday who went to see it. And they said I for they forgot to look for me. <laughs> <laughs> I will not forget to look for you. I, I'm really um, eager. The, the answer to the question is I don't know because I don't know if I'm still in it or I was cut out or if I'm in it and you blink and you miss it or I'm, okay. I'm in it and you can clearly see me but if you don't know what I look like because I had a big full beard at the time. Uh, oh, that's good yeah, to know. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just have to let you know. Yeah, I want to know. know. I want to. <laughs> we're, we're all dying to know, everybody listening to this. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Uh, but let's get back to, to, to your podcast. Yeah. I mean, enough about this. Oh, oh, isn't it beautiful? Oh, so my gosh. Let's that. set it up in a window and, and <laughs> put a light on it so that... <laughs> And we'll say we'll put it. We'll run a well, constant stream of music going. Oh, you can't get them in to the, That's why. Uh, oh my here. gosh! And, uh, I've had the, Who did it get delivered to? To Brian? To, to Brian? Okay. Brian up in well, Brian can Oregon. appreciate this. Oh, Brian appreciated it. Well, that's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Dunning was all excited about a whoopee doodle. Anyway, <laughs> now, I, here's something you may not know. Susan, that I was the very first person to interview Ross and Carrie about their podcast. It's yeah. true, yeah. And That's I, slightly more interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was fantastic. Here's some people I don't know. They've got a podcast. I'll interview them. <laughs> and we said, we like this Richard Saunders guy. <laughs>
Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you, yeah. but you're a pod, fellow podcaster, you know, the pressures of getting a show out on time and all the rest of it. Yeah, I always have infinite respect for anybody who produces a podcast, especially weekly, because it's, yeah, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of pressure. It's a lot of uh, angry emails, you know, if you say anything wrong. So, you I know, get you, those, yeah. you, you're always on the spot. Brian gets the craziest oh, emails. Oh, Brian gets pretty interesting emails. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really fun because it allows me to do a lot of things that I would want to do, but I never would otherwise because I want to have the excuse right? like drinking your own urine like drinking my own urine but also like <laughs> you flying know. off to Kentucky for four days to visit the Ark Encounter and the Creation Museum for a homeschooling conference I just did that in early May and uh, there's no way I could have justified that uh, for listeners who may not be uh, downloading Ono Ross and Terry what's 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 the idea and what's kept it going for so many years yeah well first of all I pity you but <laughs> uh, it's not too late to get in on all the fun so yeah well we're all about investigating fringe religious groups alternative medical treatments uh, sp science and spirituality and kind of the the border lines of what science tells us about the world there's a lot of people making claims right on that edge or beyond it and we're interested in trying those things out firsthand and then we report back in excruciating detail so like we tell you everything like what happens when you show up at a conference or at a psychic and you know what they ask you for and what they say and how they respond to your questions um, and, and then we try to interject enough humor to help get you through all that excruciating But, but it's, it's not just investigation. You go through all the processes. You, you get initiated, you do this, you do the courses. It's, it's, that's why I say, yeah. when do you find time to sleep? He drinks the urine. <laughs> yeah, and you know, they give us books, so we want to read the books, and we want to learn everything we can about the founders and the discoverers. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, I think it's just that both of us, uh, Carrie, Poppy, and myself, uh, just happen to be insatiably curious. And and really excited when when people can say certain things to your face that just it's like an amazing I don't know human trick like how can you actually confidently look into someone's eyes and tell them that their dead mother's right next to them or something like that um, and and that just endlessly fascinates us how do you get to that point that you can you know yeah. pedal this. Um, you know, 5G protector for your phone. That yeah. We think, you, you know that doesn't do anything and you're selling that. Or do you know? I, I don't know. We're curious. So I, I, I heard of an episode. I've been re-listening re to some of the older ones. And there's great examples when uh, Kerry might be talking to somebody and the, the somebody on the other end of the Skype call or something says, it, you know, the, the pennies start to drop and they say, mm. um, I don't want you to use this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the all-time best carry lines. Well, that's not how that works. Yeah, that's not um, yeah, Carrie's been through journalism school. She's got her master's, and she knows uh, what she's able to do and what not. Um, and, yeah, uh, some of her interviews with, um, oh, goodness, uh, I, Shaka There's various mystics and things. Yeah, and, well, yeah. Shakuntali Siberia was yes, one in particular. that's probably the voice I was trying to imitate yeah, just now. which is funny because, yeah, I, I think so. And uh, or she claims to be from Siberia originally, and now she's changed her name to Madonna, which is much harder to look up online. Madonna. And we oh, that makes in, sense, yeah. In large part because she got so much scrutiny following our investigation wow. that she sort of uh, yeah. reformulated. We even talked to two people who were uh, fairly high up in her organization who had left. And yes, um, yes. yes she changed yes. her name and now she's still peddling the same wares. Uh, th that was one of my favorite episodes because I, I thought, wow, they really got her on the run here. That was, that was a fast, that was about four years ago, three years ago? Probably. It's hard to remember. It sounds about yeah. right, yeah. Um, but yeah, also uh, Kimberly Meredith is another one that Carrie interviewed. and. Uh, came to the interview with a lot more preparation than Kimberly ever thought yeah. <laughs> would go. And that's the thing too, we get contacted all the time, as all podcasters do, uh, by various folks saying, hey, you want so-and-so on your yes. show? Yes. Or I just wrote this book about angels and connecting with light beings yes. in the fifth dimension. And we will kind of chuckle and think, do you really want to be on our show? You haven't listened to our show, have you? <laughs> uh, and uh, sometimes, sometimes we'll sort of take that bait and say like, oh yeah, go, 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 by all means, come on the show. Well, you probably get the same emails I get from people who are up to uh, publicists. Yes. Would yep. you like to have this Dr. Quack and Quack on your show? He's the <laughs> three, three times a day. Yeah, yep. right back saying, 
you do realize what the skeptic zone is all about, you know? Yeah, usually I'll say, I don't see this as a match. We'll let you know if we're interested. But usually we want to tie those interviews to an investigation. Yeah. So sometimes we'll say, okay, maybe we'll look into your magic soap, you know, and then we'll contact you uh, later. Um, but, um, yeah, other... Uh, usually we'll just kind of say I'm not interested, not quite uh, compatible with the format of our show. But the other day someone sent me um, there, th it was the publicist and they were yeah. saying, um, you know, this, this guy has written all this great material and has this device that can protect you from 5G and imbalances of electro Mag magnetic fields and so I wrote back and said he might benefit from listening to our podcast <laughs> and I gave two links to recent episodes we had done specifically Power about 5G protests <laughs> yeah where we'd sort of broken down why why none of that is a real concern you know non yeah. non ionizing yeah. radiation you know um, but he's probably heard that before and he's just kind of found a business and the publicists are just doing their job Ultimately, they yep. they don't particularly care what the point of view is. Their job is to get the person out there on podcasts and and, and if you don't if you don't reply to them for three days, they ping you again yeah. and then again. And yeah. So eventually, I'd say, sorry, not a match. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate your interest, uh, but probably not the right match because you could do a whole show just entirely that. But I don't think it would be as interesting of a show. There's an angle there, but uh, so what's coming up in the near future? That listeners might look forward to anything you can let us in on. Yeah, well, I, as we speak, um, I'm halfway through my edit of our uh, John Edward investigation. Ooh. I went to, yeah, and I'm finding not everybody knows who this is anymore. Uh, but well, that's, that's the Yuri Geller, yeah. that's the Yuri Geller somewhere. thing, right? Because what? when I give demonstrations of spoon bending, especially to the younger set, they've got a clue who Yuri Geller is. And, and that's why it's good for us to all stay current and be investigating the um, you know, the Tyler Johns and the... Tyler Johns? <laughs> it, yeah, the, yeah. Wait. Uh, now See, you've already forgotten Putting them. them together, yeah. The, uh, Tyler uh, Henry uh, and uh, Thomas John. John or right. John Thomas, or as many people together. call him. Oh, really? Um, you know, that's why you're the Cindy Cases of the world. So John Edward is now becoming something of a character from the past, huh? A bit of the irrelevance? You know, uh, just in conversations with people, uh, yeah, I don't think... John Q. Public tends to recognize him as much. Anyway. I don't know John Q. Public. Who's that? <laughs> well, J John Edward, for decades, has been making two trips to Australia. One mm -hmm. in the middle of the year to publicize his tour in, at the end of the year. And yeah. every time, every six months, what happens, he gets straight onto the chat shows and the radio shows. And he's been the darling of the Australian media with for Ross, years. Ross was with us and we did the broadcast in Pasadena. No, no, no Ross no, wasn't with us. So. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, oh wait a second. Uh, well, I remember you were protesting the James Bond Prague. Uh, I know Paula was there with Emery uh, when I was going to his no, psychic this kids investigation. Pasadena. Oh, Pasadena. Okay, no, and it wasn't the there. the cops came. And no. And was like... Wasn't there for that one. And he, he had the ACLU rules, and the police had to back off because he was like, this is public property. Oh, wow. And, that, and the John Edwards' manager came out, they've got to go, they've got to go. And Emery was, of course, like, Emory's, no, we don't have to go. Emery's good at standing his ground. He did. He stood his ground, and yeah. the police left. Well, um, There's a video of that. So the so the recent um, uh, John Edward presentation was in Burbank. He came to my hometown, yeah. or not oh, hometown, but where I live. It, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so I bought a VIP ticket and I went and they, you know, very thoroughly said, you, you shall not record, <laughs> yeah. but you can take notes. So, yes. um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, so I went, I took copious notes and now I'm breaking down his performance. Yeah. Uh, but also I'm really excited about this one. I, I mentioned this earlier. I went to Kentucky for a uh, homeschooling conference at the Ark, the recreation of yeah, the yeah, yeah, life-size yeah. Ark, yeah. Um, and even ended up getting a tour of the Ark from the guy who'd been responsible for all the signage and the final, like, you know, writing on all the exhibits. So I can't wait. It's going to be a multi-part investigation because i got to break down every single display within the Ark. There's more to podcasting than just sitting in front of a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, yeah. Um, so that's fun. I, and there's no way I could have taken multiple days off of work, uh, my regular day job, to do that unless I had the podcast as an excuse. Things to look forward to. Folks, what a pleasure it is. Uh, Ross, to meet you again. I mean, we meet each other, what, once every five years on average or something yeah, crazy like that? Just long enough that it's meeting for the first time. It is. For the second right. time. Yeah. <laughs> Always great to see you, Richard. Thank Always you. Always great to see you, too. Thank you very much. Let's say that again. Yeah, and always great to meet you too, Russ, and I look forward to the next time. That's